Oh, the NASCAR's back everybody, and this time it's in for a big change. Previously with this car, and last time you guys saw it, we were putting the 1JZ into it and trying to make this thing drift, which it did. Kinda. But now in the next couple of episodes, we're gonna try and make this thing drift properly, which is putting more angle on it, better suspension, and have this thing fully set up to be able to drift at the LZ World Tour, which is uh, coming up pretty fast. So without delaying any more time, let's get into it. Good morning or afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the world. I am starting the morning off a little mischievous because Keen, the glue to the company, the person that keeps us all in order, has this M3. And he's asked a little bit of a favor of topping up with a little bit of Mobile One because it's a little bit low. But what he doesn't know is we are going to secretly modify the car for him. I fill you in as we go along. Okay, so it's getting pretty hectic in the shed, as you can see, pretty full, we're running out of space very quick. And it's true, the people say, um, you think you got a big space, but um, any space you will actually fill. But onto Keen's car. So I've got a BMW technician here, working tough at it. Yeah. Using some penetration spray, yeah. Always, yeah. <laughs> so he has a splitter already on the car, but he, for some reason, wanted a new splitter. So I think he was calling this the GT4 splitter. I'm not really too sure. I think it just allows you to go a little bit lower to be more aggressive on the car. This one's a little bigger when it goes up these side vents and stuff. Along with that, a diffuser on the back. Not sure if you can tell, but Keen does love carbon, as you can, well, he has the fancy carbon intake, which is why it sounds so good. And finally, we have some Strom wheels and some BC Racing coilovers. So, with a combination of all these things put on the car, the car would just look that little bit better. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm going to leave Craig over there just to figure out all that sort of stuff whilst I tell you about today's sponsor, which is Car Vertical. They gather data from over 900 different data sources and deliver it to you in one easy to understand report. Now these reports show lots of different things, such as mileage, damage reports, and they can also see all the history of all the MOTs that the car's gone through in its lifetime. Now we did actually do a check on Keen's M3 and the report came out pretty good. Nothing strange with the mileage or damage, hasn't been stolen or anything like that, but here's a report of one that's not so good. So as you can see, the odometer is good, legal status, no finance or anything owed on the car, but the title check and damage needs attention. So obviously scrolling down, you can see the mileage odometer and it steadily goes up, so there's nothing dodgy going on there. But with the damage, it, uh, it isn't so good. So you can actually see pictures of the damage from when the car was written off. So for the pictures for the insurance or something like that, you can actually see how bad the damage was. This is a massive help for safety buying a car and the guy says that it was written off, but it wasn't too bad. You can do this check and find out for yourself how bad it actually was and potentially save yourself buying an absolute lemon of a car. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work on drift cars like Wayne's here because no one actually records them as crashed. But it will work on any car that you're potentially looking to buy. And let me tell you, we buy a lot of cars around here and you'd be surprised at some of the things that come up on these checks. So thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring this video and they're even that kind they're giving you guys 20% off if you use the code DRIFTGAMES. Right, back to getting Keen's car looking sweet. Okay, so obviously a bit of time has passed in the time lapse from what you guys saw, and that is because of a very frustrating situation of, well, the suspension being stuck in the hub, which um, Craig's been feeling a bit defeatist about. So if you're ever trying to do something and you see a video where it's um, 
there's a cut in it. There's probably about half an hour of people doing stuff like that. So we tried air hammering, lots of uh, spray, air hammering and hammering. And in the end, we got a big tube and a sledge, but it's done. Head to the back. But this is only the front now. <laughs> okay, so if you're watching our content for a while now, you know that we put BC Racing coilovers in everything. And obviously this car is no different. So we have the BR range for Keens M3, which in my opinion is the best road use coilover. Now that's a big statement, but we run it in all of our cars, on daily cars, track cars, and they do everything just perfectly. So we have the conventional shock and spring in one in the front, but in the rear it's keeping with the original style. So it's got the shock separate to the spring. Is the hammer in the back uh, standard for holding the shock in? Yeah, that's it. Comes with optional extra. Right, so coilovers all on and well there's not been height adjusted but obviously bcs are all height adjustable and you can soften in the dampening to make them soft or hard depending on what you like or what you need them for but now we're on to the last thing that we need to do which is the wheels so the car came on these standard m3 wheels but he wants to make it a little more aggressive to go along with the splitter and diffuser and everything like that so we got some shroms order i'm not actually sure which ones he's actually got so i'm going to open them up and see Ah, it's annoying when you open it the wrong way, isn't it? Take two. Okay, so he's gone with the Strom STR2 in a kind of satin black, which looks really good. I think these go really well with all the carbon accents that he's put on the car, like the splitter, and also the carbon mirrors. Let's make it pop a little bit more. Good job, Gray. Good job, Josh. Alright, we're not we won't show you the full look because uh, Keen has actually just arrived into the yard. So we're gonna pull it out and then probably go for some rollers when he goes for a test drive in it. But I will say somehow, and this never happens usually, I think the ride height is actually spot on, is it? Yeah, we'll see just as the front settle a little bit on a test drive. If it doesn't, we'll lower another bit, but if it does, it'll be perfect. Right, so he's just arrived, and remember he just thinks that we um, topped his car up with oil. Afternoon. Hello. That's a nice guy to drive. I have not driven 180 before. I hadn't before that and it's not too bad. Right, nice. so this morning I took your car to put some oil in the car. She was a little low. Did you get me what? sorted? Oh, sorry, did not oh. one get me sorted? We got you sorted. Let's give it a second knock. I mean, we topped it up with oil, but we also um, put some other things on it. Where did they come from? And the diffuser, that looks unreal. It also sits lower. Well, yeah, they have some BCs. We, we, we thought it wasn't stance enough, so we got some BCs and put them in there. So, um, you know, a, a little touch lower. That is unreal. Well, you're driving it around a bit too stock for too long, weren't you? I'm honestly speechless. Look at all this. You didn't even have the car. Well, it, it, it wasn't me, it was Craig, really. I, I, just, I filmed him and uh, bossed him around just a little bit. Thanks, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put oil in it? We actually <laughs> forgot to do the oil. <laughs> Come here. Thank you. Come here. Come here, you. Thank you. What's the crack of making Keane's car the coolest one we have? What's the story here? Fair, I think you already had the coolest car we have. <laughs> well, why do we make it any cooler? We should have made it worse. The car looks unbelievable. Yeah, it looks great, Keane. Well done. Well wear. Thanks, lad. I'm Thanks, so great. jealous. I have to say, I drove it and it's fantastic. I uh, didn't take it up to the red I line. Definitely didn't. Thank you. Thanks, oh my Josh. god, a handshake. We don't do that that much in this company. Usually it's a but a handshake. This is your BC warranty card. Ah. It's actually a card. It's actually pretty cool. I, I didn't actually realize it was that. There you I've go. I've never seen that before. Right, hopefully everything stays on. Okay, hopefully we'll <laughs> never be needing this. I was like, no, I know nothing to come off that. I was meaning your cars, all the stuff that we ended. Filling me with confidence. <laughs> does look great. It does look good.
Now, time to sort out the horrendous handling of a NASCAR. So obviously we weren't, we weren't going to attempt such a task by ourselves, so we have our head engineer at Drift Games, Ryan Morton. Hi. <laughs> we, 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 which is fairly true. Any, anything we can't figure out, we just, uh, well, uh, I mean, we've kind of just dumped a load of stuff here and asked you to figure this out, kind of. Yep. As, you, as you can see, we've been trying to test some ideas with Corvettes especially. Yeah, so I'll fill you guys in. So we, um, we went digging in our cave of old parts and we actually had this old Corvette setup from the once had Corvette. Um, so am I correct in saying this is a front rack setup? So kind of the same, I say kind of the same, it's similar-ish to the NASCAR. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is actually quite similar. The top two, top and bottom A-arm, similar, but it's like, not exactly the same. So, off camera, we have been uh, trying to figure out a few different ways of doing this and well, it kind of came to the same conclusion of we don't know enough about suspension to be able to freshly mount up of a suspension. Well, like what I said to you is we're fabricators. I'll be the first person to put my hand up and say I don't know much about steering geometry and stuff like that, nor do we have any of the equipment you need to measure it. Like, to, to measure the camber, I was going to use a spirit level. Like, I don't have anything else. I mean, it, it measures angle, just not that accurately. Yeah, exactly. It was like, it's about a quarter bubble over the line. <laughs> you know, so for us to do this, I think it's kind of out of the realm of you need much more accurate, like, steering equipment. So because we don't have that, we're like, okay, how about we just modify what was already in it to get more steering block. And that other reason behind this is, if we go chopping away to make that fit, uh, we're kind of committing can't to- go back. Yeah, you can't, well, you could go back, but it'd be very tricky to go back. So if we try to modify that first, because at the moment that's not gonna work, so it's as useless kind of as it is to modify the existing steering kit, and if that doesn't work, then- We'll come back down to this scenario. Yeah, and of course, somehow we're going to still be using a bit of Corvette because we have a Corvette BC and we're somehow going to be mounting that to the original NASCAR steering arms in normal fashion. Make a mount for the coilover, mount the coilover in there instead of just a spring and we'll remove the shock thing. So that is about as simple as we're going to put it. We're going to problem solve the original suspension by every time it's hitting something or there's a problem kind of cutting and remodifying and mounting and everything like that. Am I correct in saying? Yes. Okay, so as you saw there, we're cutting away. So this is the bottom arm. So as you can see, there's a big slab that's been taken out of that. And that is where the tie rod is hitting, therefore making the lock stop. So we've got away with that, which should allow us for more lock. And moving on to the hub, you can see the knuckle. Now this is like the traditional Japanese way of doing stuff, which is taking your original knuckle, chopping it, shortening it, and adding the pickup point back onto it. So this all seems pretty simple, but it is actually far from simple. Because when it comes to steering, there's a lot of geometry behind it. We're chopping up someone's hard work, changing pickup points, and it's not as easy as that, because if you just did that and moved the pickup point, the acrimony of the steering would be more lock on one side than the other, therefore driving like complete crap. So to make this so you guys understand, I'm gonna try and break this down for you in the easiest way possible. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so you've been busy, busy doing engineering your mind around this, um, well, let's be frank, silly idea. So talk to me about what we're doing. We had, what, 30 degrees, if even, of lock before. So now we're 45 degrees. Which is a big improvement, plus the Ackerman correction, which would be another big improvement. So uh, fingers crossed this thing will be a lot better. And the thing on top of that was the suspension was absolutely woeful beforehand because um if we demonstrate this shock is um like kind of 
that's supposed to come back up really, isn't it? It's kind of just dead weight, if I'm going to be honest, and it was pretty much just on the spring. But we have our good friends at BC and our old Corvette suspension kit, which um, I kind of just passed to Ryan like I did just then and asked him to figure it out. <laughs> We're going to sit that in there. Make a mount in the bottom, in where the spring used to mount, and then we're going to make like a little mini shock tower up here off these, which isn't ideal. But you guys said you didn't need to take the bike out again, so we're just gonna make that work. We've definitely gone past the point of no return now because we've cut away the original points of where the suspension did mount. So the shock was going there, but obviously that is where the disc is, so we got rid of that to allow for more lock, and we've just put the coil over in where the spring was, which was there so in theory all this should make absolute sense and work theory <laughs> Okay, so time's getting away from us a little bit and, um, well, I can't stick around to see this finish because I have to go off to Driftmaster in the morning. So, I have a trusty GoPro here and the next couple of minutes of the video is going to be by my beautiful assistant, Ryan. Oh, I'm beautiful now. I've got to sweeten you up somehow. <laughs> well, I'll tell you now, lads, this is going to be an experience. The cinematic world doesn't know what's coming. I said, Ryan, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I am going to catch up with you guys when I'm back from Driftmasters when hopefully this will be a more driftable drift car. Hello, Drift Games YouTube. So, pretty much what we've done is cut the hub and we flipped it. Main reason for this was to adjust the Ackerman. It should self steer better. Yeah, so now we reckon it's at the lead wheel should be on 45 degrees of lock and the trailing wheel will be at about 42 degrees. So we fit a BC coil over. Also like to add, it is not exactly where we would have liked to put it, but due to like everything with the drift games lads, it's done last minute so what we've done is we've mounted the bc coil over out of the corvette to this upper plate thing now obviously before this was all unboltable and whatever else but josh kind of said to me look it's not gonna have to be like perfect so yeah we just went with this it was simple it was fast that was the main thing how well it's gonna work is it, that's anybody's guess. Uh, personally, I would have liked to put a bit more structure in it. it it's like one of those things. It might last a week or it might last its lifetime. Uh, we'll find that out. That's why we test cars. So they'll figure that out. Just trying to see how it all looks when it's finished. So as you can see, it's been the trailing wheel now. It's at slightly less angle than our lead wheel before our lead wheel much less angle and this had more angle. Our BC color is great. Put it on again. Yeah. Bending the foot exactly like what I told him. I said that plate's not gonna be strong enough. Exactly. And he was just like, oh but it's fast, we get it done. Right, so obviously this being just like a 10, what was it, like 8 mil, 10 mil plate, mounting the shock off this was never an ideal situation and I kind of voiced my opinions to Josh about it, that this plate will just bend. I was right. Ideally would have just mounted the shock there and mounted it up here onto the frame. Fortunately we didn't have the option of getting longer shocks in the short time frame so we have to just try and make what we have work. So what we're looking at now is maybe putting a bar in here, joining it to the plate and putting it in here. The only issue I have with that obviously if you put that bar in you'll never be able to get this arm off. Another issue we have is this arm and the other top arm are completely different. Nothing is ideal. We will figure it out. Bar as well as it in, 
plate seems to be holding fine. It's not an ideal situation, it's just a kind of a quick fix. We will come back to it again when we have more time. And yeah, good to go. So I can confirm with the new BC coilovers, we've achieved some very nice new lows, which I think the Drift Games lads will be only delighted a bit. Uh, so yeah. It's my first time seeing it, Josh. She's come a long way from the shell that we bought in the back of a shed in England, right? So the 1J is fine, we know that, but we had problems. The lock was terrible and awful and unpredictable and had terrible Ackerman. So you think you fixed it, right? I was gonna say, we learned a lot about Ackerman. Didn't really know, know what it was before, but it, um, it, was, it was bad. Well, a lot of people, when they're learning about Ackerman, they get themselves a NASCAR and they go <laughs> through it step by step to learn how suspension works. So we're learning more on this because there's no one to ask because no one ever has made a NASCAR. Then Chris Forsberg and Ryan Turk made one for a drag car. Yeah, but they, they never did anything to the front of that one, so we couldn't really learn yeah, we're just from that. On our own here. So we've got Toyota Power. Obviously. Toyota Power. <laughs> Big Toyota guys. Pretty sure both of them are gonna be awful, but we're trying our best to make them good. But uh, I like this. This is the new BC that they've brought out for NASCAR. Um, obviously we're going green. We're trying to get things a little bit more environmentally friendly. So this is the new BC. Um, so we need to get the coilovers in there, which are a mix of you said of Corvette and other stuff and bits. Yeah, we're running Skyline on the back and Corvette at the front. In a NASCAR, obviously. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, we have no idea what we're looking at. We've yeah. never seen a car with good as in there. Well, you've got, it's, it's like an E36, you've got a trailing arm. But in many ways, it's also not like an E36, because I'd say that and hold up a house. So we've got two massive girders here and loads of adjustment, but we don't know what way we're trying to adjust it to make it better. We don't even know what, we want it to be better, but we don't know what better is. So we put it level, but I don't think that's made it better. So I think these also have adjustment here, but one of them's, they look kind of okay, so I'm not sure what's going on there. So we'll put BCs in the back of this, which should solve all the wobbling around, but these are all alien. We were, just to be clear, we were running these springs and BCs <laughs> the first time. But it turns out the spring was doing most of the heavy lifting, <laughs> so it was just bouncing on the spring. So but yeah, we'll get a, an idea of what we need to do, and then hopefully this is the final, final time we have to get all of the rusty bolts moved, so one go at it and hopefully it's okay. Because we've got some big names driving this, big names. It's very good drivers, so. Uh... I'll tell you one thing now, a lot of people have said, oh, put James Dean, I was like, I'm telling you now, James Dean even in the car would be better than me, but it still wasn't good. So we want it to be good so they can actually do some stuff. And it definitely looks like, doesn't look like the car is level either, so. It's definitely not level no. now. So I think I'm gonna ring, who would know this now? Who would be used to driving big American things fast sideways? Ah, I'll ring James Dean. So the weirdest thing about this car is, there's these two things here, so they're like, this, these two arms are like adjustable there and there, which is very strange. I've never seen that before. And in the same position right now, left to right? More or less, yeah. Got the spring we're going to replace with a BC, but now we're wondering, like, we have loads of, like, look how much adjustment is on this. But this bar, I don't know if we're trying to make it straight or up or down or what are we trying to do with it. I would say the thing with that one would be leave the car down on the ground and measure the wheels to the arches or the wheels to the chassis and see if the axle is left or right from a center point, if you know what I mean. This side is not even like the same as what's adjusting it this side, so it's not even to know where you're adjusting it from to a certain extent. I was just saying like before we got to the weekend, was there something stupid we're doing here, but if it's kind of like fairly square, it should be all right, right? If everything is square, that's the main thing of the adjustments, really. That's probably, because that's what I was thinking, was it this or was it the shock? But I think the shock's probably gonna solve a lot of the problems rather than that whatever the hell this spring is doing here. Um, it's awful, but yeah. So that, I think that all was squared up beforehand. So I was just wondering, was that, is there something you're looking at there that seems like it's a massive problem? It, no, I don't think so. And it's very hard to say without being there, you know what I mean? No, I know, I know. So what we're gonna do is we'll probably put the BCs in it, square it, and then take it for a little test and see if it's got rid of that hopping on the back. And that was pretty much the yeah. only problem with it. Yeah, I would say have it quite firm, you know what I mean? Like put a heavy, uh, fairly strong spring in the back of it potentially. 
Yeah, I think that's. I think everything's going to be quite hard on it. It doesn't need grip anyway, so it's that's fine. Yeah. That's perfect, James. Listen, we just want to double check before. I mean, you're going to be driving it at this weekend, so you're, you're going to have to figure it out. But I'm going to try and make it as good as I can be. <laughs> well, you, Chelsea, and Adam are going to take a spin in it and see who can do the best lap. Oh my gosh, drifting or fucking drifting? Obviously, it's, a, it's got an angle kit now. Really? It's an angle kit. It's got a one J. What more do you want? Hey, if you're any good, you'd be able to drift a NASCAR, sure. who isn't? We'll get it tested, we'll get it sorted, we'll give you some feedback before we get there. But thanks for your help, we appreciate it. Alright, I'm going to chat to you soon. Thanks, bud. Take care. Take care, bye. Bye-bye. So we've learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're now through to the next day, and, uh, well, uh, Dave's had a stroke in the night. Yeah, I just had a root canal, so this side of my face isn't working, so drooling a little bit. But we're alright, we're alright. You know, we get I can't it. feel anything, so it's better than it was, right? So, of course, the busiest week of the year, I have a toothache, I have a fractured tooth. Anyway, long story, nobody cares. Tanaskar is now PC equipped, fully. fully front and back. It is now Vital Fabrication Custom Angle Kit. It's been lined. I guess the only thing we can do now is take it for a test and see if it's any better than it was the last time. It did drift the last time. It did drift, but we realized it surprisingly been in Ascot, it was all backwards. Yeah, and to be honest, it was, it had no lock. The Ackerman was terrible. So when one wheel would turn, the other one would just stay like that. So it would constantly try and spin you by gripping this wheel. So hopefully that's fixed. Uh, Power-wise, it was fine the last day with the 1J. So I think we're at the last stage of trying to make it work. So I'm really looking forward to seeing like a top level pro driver like Chelsea or Adam drive this because obviously it's not an ideal car, but it should be fun to see them try. So that's the whole point. We're not hit a wall now because we can't fix any of this, so it'll be well worn. I'd be more worried about the wall than the rear of the car, to be fair. <laughs> Knock over the block. So yeah, we're going to get on the trailer, we're going to take it to Mandela just for a very quick 10 minute test, and then we can box at least one car off for the Aussie World Tour, which would be beautiful because we've got about 20,000 of them out there, all wrecked. Okay, so we've made it down to Mandelo Park, which is our testing area for everything. And they're kind enough to give us the last half an hour of the day to see how this is going to be. Our own Ricky Rudd is going to give it another go. Well, I've got enough painkillers in me, so I'm a real NASCAR driver today. <laughs> I'm having a great time, boys. Don't do a drift. I'm going to do it to drifting. <laughs> Do you not think we're sitting in a bit of a dangerous area actually here? Oh, you're on the gravel trap, it's fine. Yeah, I'm good. Right, first test, let's see. <laughs> that was vicious. <laughs> Has it got a bit of a snapback? Slight bit of snapback. <laughs> It's like it goes, it was drifting. I was like, oh yeah, no problem, I'll unwind it. And then it unwound with about 20 ton. The steering is better. It does have lock, and the steering is actually okay. The rest of it, the weight, the understeer, the snapback, the handbrake jump. Well, I mean, you can kind of, you can train an obese person to run a, run 100 meters, but like at the end of the day, like after, as much training as they do, that it's still gonna be tough. This is the perfect example of it is what it is. We'll try it again. Almost went again. Flipping neck. I think he's getting a bit too confident then. To be honest, I'd say that's a win, Josh. <laughs> he spun! I know, but like it worked kind of better than ever. <laughs> it's fun, but it's I'm not sure what's going on. I like you're you're about 30% in control. I'm going to try and make it 33. It's 100% better than last time. Yeah, it's a lot better. Oh, it's a million times better. Okay, maybe not a million times better. <laughs> <laughs> still 
<laughs> it's still terrible. I don't know, like with the best driver in the world. Terrible but a challenge. Like if you were the best driver in the world and I told you you couldn't drive it, is that kind of the point? You wouldn't drive. Like if I said to Chelsea, no, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't drive that NASCAR around the track. You'd be, you'd be determined. That's the challenge, because if it was just an easy car to drive, then what would be the challenge? Like I've been wanting to drive this thing for a while now, and well, at least it doesn't want to kill you as much, so take my opportunity. Go on, Dave. <laughs> that wasn't as gracious as you. There we go, see? No problem. Josh is gonna attempt to drift the car, and now he's gonna feel what I've felt for the last two months. <laughs> Did too bad. Ah, ah. So I, I think Josh's low IQ has actually given him the edge. He's not overthinking it. Totally He's bad. not going, what's that noise? Something's on fire. He's not thinking. He's thinking like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> Josh, you got to go fast. We're going fast, Josh. Ah. That's the rule of it, I think. It's in top. Oh, yeah, look at the crawl, look at the slope. Oh, absolutely no bother. It's like on the sign of reason place car. Like, they never give them a good car. It's, yeah. al it's always a rubbish car. Yeah. And it's the best what they can do with it. And that's kind of what this is. Well, you know, we're giving it to Adam LZ and Chelsea to know for the drive, and they are in their blood American. So maybe we're too European. Maybe we like things like, I don't know, suspension and handling and things working correctly. And well, this, ha this has none of it. No. <laughs> so we're going to see. We've got to the conclusion now that I can only drive it at 30%, Josh can only drive it at 30%. Let's see if Adam LZ and Chelsea don't know if I can drive it at 33%. 33.7. 33 and a third percent at the LZ World Tour this weekend. It is definitely better, the steering is better, it works, it looks cooler because it's lower. But we're gonna find out this weekend live, live at the LZ World Tour, whether or not they can drift it. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> 